You've got your first real estate gig. You're super excited. Your first paying job, but you want to know what to bring. Don't worry. In this video today, we've got you covered. Hi everybody and welcome back to another video here at Coastal Drone where today we're going to talk about what to bring in your gear bag for a real estate shoot. Before we talk about what's in the bag, let's talk about the actual bag that we'll be using today. So this is actually a camera backpack and what's nice about camera bags, traditional camera bags, is they're padded and they've got a lot of pockets for different things. You can get a bag on Amazon but you want to make sure that it's got a lot of padding, a lot of pockets and enough protection for your stuff. So for beginners up to aspiring pros, the DJI Mini 4 Pro is a great real estate drone. When it comes to real estate photography and videography, of course you're going to need something that's high resolution and sharp, and it's going to need to have clear images and smooth video that can accurately capture the property, right? So you want something that's going to be color accurate and reliable. The Mini 4 Pro really delivers in this. It's got a 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor, and of course it'll shoot up to 48 megapixels with its foveated sensor. For beginners, this drone is particularly plug and play, especially when you get the drone with the smart controller. It also has the ability to do point of interest in spotlight mode, which means that you can actually orbit around a property and use minimal physical inputs to actually get that shot. And it's gonna be smooth and cinematic. The Mini 4 Pro does have obstacle avoidance in all directions. At this budget level, the value you're gonna get with the Mini 4 Pro really makes it an unbeatable entry point. Most of the time when you are shooting in residential areas, you'll have a good hard surface to take off from. Maybe you're in a less populated area, maybe you're shooting commercial real estate, in which case you might not have a great surface to take off from. In these situations, dust, dirt, and other crap can get into the motors of your drone. So it's always a good idea to have a landing pad with you. This is an inexpensive landing pad, about $30 on Amazon. It is weighted, so it will not blow away. And this will protect your drone from any items on the ground that could get sucked in through the propellers and the motors. You don't want to be halfway through a job and realize you filled up all your storage. Now you have to delete something or reformat the card or something like that. We recommend bringing multiple SD cards in an SD card wallet like this. Remember the rule. Two is one and one is none. You'll need at minimum a V30 card and we don't recommend getting any SD card that is under 64 gigabytes. Currently, SD cards are fairly affordable. You should be able to get a couple of SD cards that are a decent size and a decent speed. Normally, look for sales on Amazon or at other electronics retailers. If you're concerned about an SD card being compatible with your drone, check with the manufacturer to make sure that they're compatible. Purchasing a protective case is a lot cheaper than buying a new set of SD cards. They will work wonders for protecting your data. And remember, when you are a drone pilot, the product is the data. We recommend keeping a system in place for your SD card wallet for example, when we're done with an SD card, we'll actually turn it around like that, and that confirms to us that this card is full. So the upside down cards are the one that's full. You can also see there's a left side or a right side. You could, left side is oh, empty cards, right side, full cards. Most drones these days are pretty good on battery life, especially when you're flying slowly in a cinematic way, but you never wanna show up to a job with just one battery. We always recommend having multiple batteries. When you're purchasing a new aircraft, if it's a DJI aircraft, we recommend getting the Fly More kit, which comes with three batteries. That's triple the flight time. Depending on your aircraft, you can also purchase standalone batteries, getting yourself more and more flight time. In order to get good looking footage and to correct motion blur, you're going to need a set of two types of filters, an ND or neutral density filter and a polarizing filter. ND filters reduce the amount of light that is going into the sensor on the aircraft. What that does is it allows you to adjust the shutter speed to get correct motion blur. The other types of filters that you can get are polarizing filters. Now these types of filters cut down on the glare that you might see reflecting off of windows, car windshields, and other reflective surfaces. A set of these will run you under $100 and can be found at most online retailers like Amazon. In the event that your drone ends up in a tree, we're not going to judge why that ended up in the tree, you might want to bring an extra set of propellers and the tools required to swap them out. This is another reason why you want to purchase the Fly More kit, as it will come with an extra set of propellers and the tools required to change them out. If you're new to drone real estate, we have a whole episode that goes in to how to get started in the drone real estate space, so if you're interested, you can check that out. As soon as the shoot is done, it is a best practice to get a backup of your footage. Either bring a laptop with you on site and back it up there, or make sure that it is the first thing you do when you get home. So one of the things that can happen when you're taking on, putting off filters, or just even handling your gear is you can get a fingerprint onto your lens. This will affect the quality of your shot. That's why it's always a best practice to bring a microfiber cloth like for your eyeglasses, make sure that your lenses are clean. 
if you're using one of the remote controls that uses your phone as the screen, you're gonna need to bring a backup power bank. Using your phone as the screen is gonna chew through your phone's battery pretty quick and you need to have your cell phone available in case there's an emergency. You can also use a battery like this to charge your drone's batteries between flights. Make sure you have maximum airtime. We always recommend using one of the remote controls that has the built-in screen. If you're in a bright environment or an environment where the weather is constantly changing like it is today, having the screen built in will be very, very beneficial to your operation. On a side note, make sure that you're comfortable for the flight, comfortable for the elements. Hat, water, Advil if you need it, food, whatever you need on site to make sure that you feel comfortable and safe for the flight. If you're feeling unwell, if you're feeling unfit to fly, do not fly. Did we miss an essential that's in your gear bag? Make sure to let us know in the comments. If you've liked this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. We've got more videos coming. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next episode.